Welcome to our Watch and Learn today. We're going to talk about how to properly load your machine. I'm Johnny Barfus. With me is... I'm Kim Sandberg. We are both studio educators here at the Handy Quilter. We get a lot of questions about how to properly load your machine. And we're going to show you, and also why are there two different ways to load. Exactly. So we're going to show you both ways. I'm going to be loading in standard view. And I'm loading in clear view. And we're going to talk about what the difference is. So yeah. why... Let's talk about why Clearview first. Clearview. So Clearview is really great when you're using rulers. So as you can see here, I've got my ruler based on my machine. And when I'm using a ruler and I'm in Clearview, it's going to be loaded. And you can see that I don't have a bar to bump up against. Right. It makes it easier to use my rulers. Whereas if I was doing that in, here, I'll hand you the ruler, you can demonstrate. You can't get quite as close because that bar's there. So that's the real advantage for Clearview. And rulers. I have to say, I always mess up because I always load it just regular. Then I'm using good. rulers and I'm trying to do my ruler. It doesn't work, you guys. It doesn't work. It just cuts out some of that space that's available to use. Right. So, why is it good to use standard view? It's easier access to the bobbin case and the yep. bobbin area. So, it's easy to get in there, change your bobbin, and of course, we have our, our light in there. Yeah. So it makes it nice and easy to access. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Excellent. So, we're going to show you how to. We suggest loading. Yes. There are other ways. Absolutely. If you have something that works for you, perfect, go for it. We're going to show you what works really well for us. Yes. We call that the one, two, three system. Yes. So we have our, we, we number our bars from here going back. Mm -hmm. So we have one, two, and three, right? Right. When you're in standard view. In standard view. It's a little different when you're in clear view. So let's talk about standard view for a minute. So what goes on this first bar, Johnny? The first bar up right here, it goes the bottom of my backing. Right. So I'm going to, Put up my back, load the bottom of it along there. Yep. Then this one is my top. Right. And then this bar here, number three, is the top of my backing. Top of your backing. Yes. Exactly. So the backing so the, goes straight across underneath here yeah. to that leader, right? Yes. That's right. And then in clear view, tell us about in that. In clear view, it's a little different. One other thing, just want to notice really quick. You know that you've got your leaders set up right on standard when they, we call it waterfall in together. Yes, cascade waterfall. Cascade in. They cascade in. Just think in. of this motion. Yes. Do a little dance when you're doing that. Just think of that little. It's a little, it's a little different when you're in clear view. So you notice that clear view, I've got one bar dropped lower than the other. And you actually can just lift this side part of the sidearm up and down really easily to switch between the two. Now, Johnny, can you switch in the middle of a quilt? You can. You guys, don't do it. Don't do it's it. It's a pain. I so, totally did it at home though. Yeah. But you can do it. But. You can do it, but it's, it's a little confusing because we actually load the opposite. We are going to put the backing on bar number two okay. when we're loading in clear view. And we're going to put the top on bar number one. The same goes though, the backing is going to come back and connect to the leader that's on our take-up pole, mm -hmm. which goes under our idle pole. So it's a little different. You just got to stop and think for a minute and ask yourself, how am I going to be quilting this quilt? Right. And which method of loading is going to work best, right? So personal experience, yes. like I just got used to doing just standard view, so that's what mm -hmm. I usually do. Yeah. And then you? I use clear view all the time because I tend to use rulers a lot, just kind of a last minute thing, and I've learned it's a, a lot easier, as we mentioned, to just already have it loaded that way. Right. So that's what we it's, do. Again, it's personal preference, but if you're going to be using rulers, and yeah. what's great is, like Kim just demonstrated, it's easy to switch back and forth really with easy. this sidearm. We call this the sidearm. These are the sidearms. Oh, sorry. And, and this. Oh, my goodness. Just there we go. Push I it forward apologize. a little bit. Oh, okay. And, these are available on our Studio 2 and Gallery 2, two frames. frames. If exactly. you don't have that, if you have the Gallery frame or the Studio frame, this is available as an upgrade, and we'll talk yep. more about that later. Yep. So what's the next step, Johnny? So we both just talked about loading. So we, when we load, we load with pins. That's, that's yeah. the way that we do it here, um, and that's how we're going to show you. So let's talk about pinning for a minute. Let's grab our back. And you always want to mark what on your back, Johnny? The middle. The middle. And you're going to find that center point. And sometimes people will just take and clip it. Sometimes you'll put a pin in. So there's a difference right there. I'm just going to clip this. Oh, you want to clip mine too? Sure. I usually will put a pin in at home, but then that's one you other can, thing i got to keep track of. You can pin it. You can. But your backing, you know your backing, we recommend that you have an extra four inches all the way around, so it's got to be eight inches bigger than your quilt top. Right. 
eight inches longer and eight inches wider, you know you're gonna be trimming that away. So yeah. that little clip is just fine. Wouldn't recommend doing that on your quilt top. But we're gonna take our backing, and Johnny, why don't you show on yours what the first step is gonna be. I like to throw it over like this. Oop. There you go. We have that table back there to catch everything. Yep. I just like to throw it up there and then pull it forward. And we're gonna start pinning here, but Johnny's, Johnny's just gonna show you how to put a pin in. And then we thought it would be kind of fun if we maybe do a little race. We're gonna do a race, you guys. Kim is fast, so. Johnny's kind of scared. I want you to cheer for me. So we'll see who can, who can load their To get the a closer fastest. look of that, we're trying to get a nice big bite of our fabric and then in that pin in that so. pin so you can see that a nice big chunk nice big chunk and about how close do we space those pins i say about a finger width apart yeah. i have big fingers so well and that's i i was going to say that's yeah. that's unique to each of us and <laughs> i i i mentioned the same thing but johnny you got to stop because i was going to demonstrate gonna, you're going to get ahead <laughs> Let's okay, talk about though. Cheat. So there's one thing that we do different when we get to the end here. So we pin in the center and work our way out in both directions. Why do we do that, Johnny? To keep it nice and taut and even. Yes. So like I yeah, I like to do one start in the middle. I like to go to the left. You, that's just personal preference. Yeah. I go to the left. When we get to the end, we'll just show that quickly. Yeah. We'll take these pins. I've all I've been going all from the point going right to left. On this end, I'm going to go left to right, and I like to take a couple of more smaller bites like that, yep. and then finish with that pin on the inside. Yep. So that pin isn't sticking out to the end, and if you happen to, like, I've done it, ugh, We've all done brush it. <laughs> by like this, you can catch your finger or something. So yeah. just on that end, it's nice to do that a pin going that Make sure way. The, the pearl side of the pin yeah. is out. And one of the reasons why we recommend here doing the smaller bites is there's a little more tension on the end of that top. It pulls on it. That pin is much less likely to pop out if you do those few little extra weavings through right. that. So, I only did one, yep. but you can do more. You can. And Johnny, does it matter which side you put the pins on? If you put the pins on the leader side or on the quilt side, does it matter? Well, I don't I don't think it matters. It, it really doesn't. No. And it doesn't matter which direction you pin in either. If you're, if you're a lefty and you pin opposite the way that Johnny and I are going to show, it doesn't matter at all. Right. Okay, um, are we going to have our, oh, go ahead. Well, let's, let's talk about, so we pin on our, because we we're going we're gonna to race to show this process, so let's <laughs> walk through this. So, so we're going to pin. So this is the back. Yeah. And then we're going to roll it up. We're going we're gonna to roll it all the way onto the, lead, onto yeah. the pole. Then we're going to put our top. Top. On this next pole, you're right. going to put yours on the other pole. On, on the front one, I'll, we'll I'll, I'll start on this pole, pole number and two, then we'll and then pole number one. And then put the back onto the back bar. Exactly. And we'll talk, we'll talk through this as we go. Yeah. So. We might speed up a little camera a little bit, just so you guys don't have to watch pinning, because that's not the most exciting thing. It's but not the most exciting thing, but. It might be. You never know. So. Who's going to. Okay, I want to I want to get equal here now. Okay. So let me get my back across. I'm going to take my pin out, so I only have one pin in. You only have one pin in. And I'm going to lock my frame so it oh, quits running away sheesh. from me. Now, normally I would find the center of my leader, but I'm going to do it a little bit over to the side today, just because yeah. that's where I threw that's where I threw my uh, backing across. All right, Johnny. Are you ready? I think I'm ready. Let's see. I feel like we need to some. I know, dun, like dun, on your mark. Dun, 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 dun. Are we ready? So on your mark, get you set, mark? go. Go. Oh, okay. man. Now, are we going to lose points if we stab ourselves? Now, my grandma always said a little blood on the quilt would never hurt anything because that showed, you know, it was made by hand. A little blood, sweat, and tears, Just right? Actual blood, sweat, and tears. Although we don't like tears in our quilts. We want everyone to be happy while they're quilting. Yes. You guys. Hey. Da -da -da. And we just line these edges up and try to keep them even as yeah. we're going. I, try to put your pin about the same distance down from the edge all the way across. That'll keep things nice and even. And we always point out about a quarter inch. I think I do about a quarter inch because as quilters, we know what a quarter inch seam looks like, right? Yes, we do. So we... Um, 
Okay, I'm halfway across. Ah! <laughs> you guys, I was talking. It was not fair. It's okay. I'm talking too. I was too. thinking. I know. I'm talking too. I was too. thinking about quarter inch quilting foot or something. I don't know. I don't Dang know it something. There's lots of things that are quarter inch that have to do with uh, quilting, luckily. Oh, and by the way, you will notice that we both put our backing on so that the back is, the right side is down. That's really important. <laughs> <laughs> you want to make sure and load oh. the quilt so that your back is down. I don't know. Okay, Johnny, have now, you ever? <laughs> what if I put my back, uh, I've done all the, I've pinned the whole thing on uh -huh. and I didn't put it in the right direction. Well, what would you do? Guess what I would do? I would unvelcro, I would unroll everything and unvelcro my leader if I can and velcro it back on going the right way. Okay, okay, I'm putting my that last one That is something else that is magical about our leaders is they all have Velcro. So if you put something on the right way, don't unpin it. You guys. Just undo, undo the Velcro. Undo your Velcro. Oh dear. Okay. There was a needle in my pin cushion. So what the I'm heck? ready to start rolling my back on. And what I'm going to do to make sure I roll it in the right direction, I'm going to drop this ratchet right here. And that way I can only turn my pole in the correct direction. And then as I am rolling this fabric up, I'm gonna make sure that it stays nice and even across. I wanna try and keep the edges of my fabric right here lined up as I roll that on there. And you'll notice that in this method of loading in clear view, my backing comes up over the top. On Johnny's, it's gonna go down underneath. So, all right, I got my top. Oh dear. The first one loaded. I'm gonna grab my top. Sheesh, Larish. <laughs> okay, I'm to the end of my leader, but not the end of my top backing, so that's fine. Oh, that's okay. All, all right. All right, so I, I push that over there. And the reason I like to do that especially is it gives some drag mm -hmm. to your backing. So as you're rolling, you're adding a little bit of drag to your back to help that it ensures it's coming, gonna go on kind of taut. It's like a little bit of tension on it, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, a little tension. A little tension. And then like Kim mentioned, I'm gonna make sure that as I go, I just wanna keep make sure I go over the top of my previous roll. Yep. And that will be an easy way to keep it straight and lined up. All right, Johnny, I'm starting to pin my top oh, goodness on. Goodness gracious. <laughs> I'm gonna go fast on that one, okay. I got my top here. So once again, I'm just lining up that edge and dropping my pins in there, leaving about oh, a fingertips width between each pin. You don't need too many in here. Just enough to keep things nice and steady. I'm going to find the center. I'm going to find the center of both ends of my top. Are you marking it? I'm, or? Gonna, I'm using a pin. You're using a pin. That's so good. I'm using so a good. pin. I'm not going to cut my top. That would be ridiculous. This, my top was actually folded in half that way. And I've got a nice crease mark down the center of my fabric that's letting me know where my center was. That's beautiful. I'm just going to take advantage of that. Oops. Good job. Yeah, well, um, you know. I sometimes cut the top because if I have a big old border. Oh, yeah. And you're going to maybe trim a little. But don't do what Johnny does every time, you guys. Yeah. Okay. You do what works for you. That's what's important, right, Johnny? You do what works for you. We are showing you our best practices. Yes. Or at least what works for us. At least what works for us. On a consistent basis. Yep. All right, Johnny. I'm three quarters of the me. way across. Holy smokes. <laughs> oh. oh, Johnny, you can sing for us. <laughs> What's the loading uh, song that you always sing? I don't what is, is there a loading song? I don't know if there's a loading song. You guys, I like to make up silly songs. He's here got in the songs office. for everything. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. I apologize in advance, oh, but, but sometimes fun. you might hear a silly song from me. Okay, I'm putting my last pin in oh, on the goodness. end. I'm turning Gracious. it so that I'll have that... The pearl tip out, so it'll be in the right direction. I'm gonna set my pin cushion off here to the side. And I'm gonna drop my ratchet. And this is one thing we can take a closer look at on Clearview. 
there's, there's on both of these frames, there's actually three ratchet stops. So when you're doing clear view, you use the two outside ones and not the middle one. And there's actually these cool little brackets right here that will hold it out of the way. So I'm just going to drop this ratchet stop. And then I can only turn in the correct direction, which is what I want. And I'm going to go ahead and roll this. Make sure that I'm not inadvertently getting a little bit of my top in there. Keeping it nice and even. Okay, we'll go to right there. And the next step, I'm jumping ahead of Johnny here a little bit. So I need to attach my backing to my take up leader. And I have a, actually this is kind of funny, because I have the studio frame. You guys. <laughs> which has, because, because we have different sizes of frames here. These ones are cut down a little smaller. So these are ones we used to demo on. Um, I have actually a super leader on the back of mine. And you guys can see how nice and big this is. Look at how much space that takes Tell up. them what a super leader is. Super leader. So this is, uh, it's 20 something inches long instead of in the teens. I can't remember exactly what the amount is. But it, what it's, it does is it makes it so you don't have to bend over as far to grab this leader and attach it. Now, I'm not saying she cheated. Well, by putting this load leader on mine. I'm not saying that. I gave that. Johnny I'm the taller frame. That. I gave Johnny the taller frame. That's what I was doing. So what I want to do now is I actually want to loosen up my back a little bit. So I'm going to raise the ratchet stop on the back so I can unroll it just a little bit. And I forgot to mention that when I rolled up my backing. So I did put that down, but now I'm going to show you here on the load, on rolling the top, I put that ratchet, that ratchet down. So then as I'm rolling, same thing like Kim said, I know that I'm going in the correct direction. Right. Yep, if you and can't hear the click, and how do it I, doesn't turn. <laughs> yes. And you know what I did? What did you do? I did it upside down. No, you didn't. Oh, you did! It's okay. You guys. <laughs> So you want to make sure. This is why talking you, while loading. Yeah. As your top goes right side up on your quilt. This is yes. printed fabric, and I put it right side down. Of course. Okay, we're going to show you the magic of the Velcro right here. You can flip it over. I'm undoing the Velcro. I love this, Johnny. I'm going to win. Of course you're going to win. It's okay. I'll come help you when I get done with mine. I'm just going to roll it that way. Now my printed right side up fabric is going the right direction. Awesome. Sheesh. Same thing as I'm rolling this. I want to make sure that the edges, um, stay the nice edges and yeah, the edges are staying lined up as I roll. Exactly. I can put that lat ratchet down to make sure I'm going the right direction. And like so. Like so. And now I'm going to put the top of my backing. And like Kim said, we want to make sure it goes underneath that bar. Yep. And that makes sure. Sheesh. And that is to be sure that <laughs> when you're quilting, you're always keeping an even, it's always flat, a flat surface on that needle plate. Exactly. So that's why we want that. Um, that's why we want this bar to make sure we have that bar there and going underneath the bar is to ensure a flat surface on there. All right. Yep, that flat surface is really important. It can make a difference in your tension actually if it's not done properly. Okay, so I've got my back all pinned to my take up leader. <laughs> and I'm going to come up here and on my top, my take up pole, that's what we call this one here is my take up pole. I'm going to drop this ratchet stop once again so that I only turn it in the correct direction and I can go ahead and roll this up. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it right there. That totally works. I'm going to straighten out any wrinkles in my leader. I want things to be nice and good. And I'm going to drop the, my ratchet top for my backing. Forgot to do that again, and it loosened up a little bit there. You guys might have seen that. 
So I've got my backing all attached, Johnny. Really? That's I amazing. Do. I do. So the next step is putting in your batting. And this is another one where there's a bit of a difference between the two frames. So I actually need my batting to go in between these two bars. It's going to come down off the top. We'll have it, you know, this is where the top of the quilt's gonna be. It's gonna come down and then go down through here. I find that it is much, much easier to do it at this stage. I'm gonna get my batting on the right way here. I'm gonna go ahead and just lay that down and then I can put it through. Now, if you're, you have a really big bat and it's really fat through here, don't forget you can always lift this pole up, undo that ratchet stop, and you can lift this pole up and put it in the pole cradle on the side so that you've got even more room to put all this batting through there, okay? Even though this is in that different configuration, you can still use your pole cradles. And if you don't have these pole cradles on your machine, they are amazing, you can add those yes. to your frame. Yes, you can. Okay, so I've got my batting in there. We'll just kind of scoot that out of the way. The next thing I want to do is pull up my top. So once again, I'm just going to lift my ratchet stop right here on my front, my top pole, the one that's closest to me. And I'm just going to roll this up, unroll it, not roll it. And I'm going to bring it up here and lay it on top. You guys can see that I'm, and then just make it nice and even. I've got that center mark here. I'm not sure if you guys can see that, but there is a fold so I can see right where my center mark is. And then I am going to just very gently turn this pole with the, my front on it until this is just all nice and smooth here. And then I'll drop my ratchet stop. I don't want to put a lot of tension on the top at this point because the next thing I need to do is my plumb line across the top. But actually, there's one thing I need to do first. And Johnny, I think I won. <laughs> of course, you, you totally think? won. You smoked me. <laughs> I totally Sheesh. smoked you. But you're doing good. I actually ran out of pins. I thought that might be an oh, issue. Oh, no. Do you but need it's some fine. No, nope, I'm just going to do this here. last one. Here. Oh, look at that. I'll share. She, of course you will. Sorry. So nice. I am the one that got everything together for filming. I'm not saying she cheated. <laughs> So there's one other component that's really important when we load. We have tension on the top and the bottom, the top and the bottom of both of these pieces of fabric. But we need some tension on the side here too to keep everything nice. And that's what our side clamps are for. So I want to be sure and take my side clamps and just clamp them on the side. And then I just pull up and I just want there to be enough tension on them to hold it even. We don't want it pulling things out or anything. And you can see that I actually only have room for one clamp right now, just with where my, the top of my uh, quilt is positioned in the frame. And that's just fine. You use what's available, right, Johnny? Right, and I think mentioning that, like when I was doing, I was trying to like do my plumb line clear at the very back oh, of the frame. You don't need to do that. You don't need to do that. You can always do your plumb line right here, nice and close where it's easy for you to reach. So at this point, we would go ahead and do a plumb line, which... We're not going to do that. We're not, we're not going to actually stitch that, but I just would bring my machine here right now and find the top edge of my quilt. And then using a channel lock, and there's a lot of different channel lock options available. There's, there's a channel lock that's like this one right here that you put on the wheels of the carriage. Is that? No, actually I would put this on the wheels. That would go on the wheels of the machine. The wheels of the machine, I have so one that here my, too. my machine doesn't move this way at all. So you can use a channel lock. If you have a pro stitcher, you can use your channel locks. We have horizontal and vertical. Or if you happen to be one of the people who has the electromagnetic channel locks, you can use them at this point. And you do a straight line across, just starting out having everything nice and straight. Now this is a question that we often get. How tight do you want your fabric to be in the frame? I'll let you finish that up. Oh, I'm just going to show you. Really I got quick. my batting up. Yep. I've got my top. I put my top up in the pull cradle. Yep. I'm going to pull that to the top. I have my pin over there where I like where I pin the center. Nice. Then drop it down. And like Kim said, you can do it. We like to do a plumb line on the batting first. Mm -hmm. Then yep. your fabric. 
All right, you can pin it all down. I'm not good at that pinning. I yeah, I'm not either. I don't know. I see people do that, and they think they're a magician. I I, I agree. They have I magic agree. in their fingers. I just I just very carefully roll my top back, do a seam across, and then I roll my top down flat, and then use my hand to kind of hold it in place as I go across. But <sighs> one of done. the one of the <laughs> questions we always get, Johnny, right? is how tight should your fabric be in the frame? Right. It should not be trampoline tight. No. And it should not be like a hammock. Right. What the rule of thumb that we like to use yeah. is actually the rule of a finger. Uh -huh. <laughs> you can have your thumb. What you want to be able to do is put your finger underneath and grab your finger down to that first knuckle. Right. So grabbing about that much of your finger, I guess you could use your thumb. You rule could. of thumb. Rule of but thumb. That, oh. <laughs> that allows you to know that you've got the proper amount of tension yeah. I on have the, your quilt top. I have the tendency to want to really crank it down. Yeah, me too. So I'll do that and then I'll relax it by like one or two ratchets. At least one. One or two, yeah. Do you do one or two? Um, it depends. It depends, yeah. depends on how tightly I pulled it <laughs> to start So with. what I'm doing, I'm like, yeah, we're going to get this tight down. No, don't do that. No, no. And if you do, lo just loosen up by one ratchet. Yeah. Exactly. Um, okay. Okay. I so, think that's about it. Yeah, I think so. Will you tell us about this quilt behind us? Yes. Okay, so this is such a cool quilt. Kelly, um, Kelly Ashton quilted this. Um, it's actually one that we made in the studio together. I, I helped piece it. Johnny helped I cut helped it. Cut. It was a whole group project, but the really cool thing about this quilt is the spelting in the center. And that's actually a little sneak peek of what we're going to be doing next week. We're going to be talking about the felting foot and showing you how we used it to make this quilt. Yeah, so we just came out with a felting foot, and Kelly brought in some really cool things yes. today that she found. So watch for that next week. I think that's it for our Watch and Learn. Yeah. If you've liked this, be sure to love it, give us a thumbs up, uh, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, yeah. and we'll see you next week. Have a good week quilting.